Hi everybody. Hi Carol. We're Hi. back on the couch again. Absolutely. And so, we, yes. before I'll catch, I'll start with the question. 17 years out. 17 years out. I got diagnosed on the 16th of April 2004. Yeah. And we were chatting about it over the weekend. Yeah. I remember yeah. every single detail of that day. Yeah. From when I woke up. Yeah. And the worst part is, yeah. and yeah. this is probably why I do what I do. Yeah. When I went into the breast unit at Charlotte, yeah. then the gym, yeah. I walked in, yeah. young blonde doctor, I might add. Not go. this one, though. <laughs> yeah. But with yeah. all due respect to youngster, yeah. I sat down, she opened my file, looked at me and went, okay, you've got breast cancer, you need to go up to oncology, 495, and make an appointment for chemo. And I looked at her and I went, excuse me? She said, well, your, fa- your results are here. You've got a breast cancer. You need chemo. So go upstairs, make an appointment. Yeah. That was it, Carol. I was in her office for not even five minutes. Yeah. And that's how my journey started. So, Louise, this is so important. But Lisa, how old are you now? I'll be 52 next so week. So you're catching me up. I'm yeah. catching up. Okay. Catch so I, th- I think you see... I mean, what, how much has changed? I even look at this. I've been doing this for about 25 years now. And how much has changed? But that concept. So I always say you can't change your diagnosis, okay? But you can change the concept of informed consent. And the problem is when you just get a news, bad news, something, it's kind of like the carpet has been pulled out from underneath you. And you can't make informed choice decisions and you shouldn't make and I think there and then there was this concept of three things, there's this concept of vertical medicine, so the patient said, the patient listens to the doctor, the doctor says, this is the diagnosis, this is what you must do, white coat behind a desk, and you listen and that is so far into how I've grown up because you have to question. You have to ask questions and have a right to and understand it's the patient's body and not the doctor's body. So there's vertical medicine. Is the fact, how can you make any decisions when you just feel like, how is this possible? I mean, you are how old? My math is really bad. 34. 34 years old. You had at that stage no cancer in your family. No. Yeah. Okay. You're just minding your own business. You felt something. Mm. You went to someone, and it was the last thing you expected. Well, me being me, by the time I walked in to see the doctor, I'd already expected that result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and decided for once in my life I cannot do anything about this. This yeah, is yeah. beyond my control. Yeah. So gave myself over to a team of doctors. Yeah. But there was no navigation. Yeah. It took me I only figured out about two years later what kind of breast cancer I had. Yeah. I didn't even know there were different kinds. I had yeah. breast cancer. Yeah. But the thing is and I think this is what is so important today is that the work we are doing at yeah. breast health and yeah. navigation I sat with a patient this morning that yeah. you brought to me, yeah. um, lovely older lady, yes. and explained everything to yeah. her. Yeah. Everything, the type of cancer yeah. she's got, etc. Yeah. I went up to oncology, made a booking, and they said, come back on the 14th of May. I thought, oh, then I'll see a doctor. I walked up after chemo on the 14th of May. Nobody explained any of that to me. I know. And I think this is where it's so important how we've advanced. Yeah particularly in the government sector where we work most of the time, yeah. that our patients walk out of here and have an understanding that I never had. Or, or we have to contact. So, so you bring up something really important. So we've advanced on it, and yet I still see in private people who have come in and had surgical biopsies and just gone through the entire process, gone from A to B to C to D, because... The first doctor, be it the radiologist, the GP, the surgeon, told them that. And and it's still foreign to me. And I always look and I go like, why did you not ask a question? I think I've written that article, What's Up, Doc? Question your doctors. 
ask them and ask all the options around everything. Do you attach mm. dockies in this to Yeah, so so it's foreign my nature is always like oh, excuse me, tell explain more. I'm gonna make a statement. Yeah. I think currently, because we work in both environments, yeah. public and private, yeah. Yeah. that our patients in the government public sector clinics yeah. are actually having a better journey with their breast cancer yeah. from start of mammograms, yeah. biopsies, through to treatment options because there's a multidisciplinary right. team working here. Right. When private, we're in private, with all due respect, they're not always working in multidisciplinary right. teams. And you walk into the doctor, he says, you've got a breast cancer, you don't even know what it's about. You don't know what steps should be followed. Yeah. And you, I'm not going to say blindly, but you just follow this doctor because yeah. he's the doctor. It's like my training is general surgery. Do you know, technically, I could take out your appendix and your gallbladder. Do you know the difference between the two at <laughs> the stage? I do, but I haven't done it in 25 years, so I don't think you should let me near your yeah. gallbladder or your appendix. Okay. Yeah. It's like, who do you call if you have a heart attack? Sure. Hey? No. Okay. So, so, absolutely. It's, 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 it's understand. So, that, that's the other thing. How often is your doctor doing this work? Are they doing... Um, uh, you know this story we're supposed to be CPD and checking and everything? I don't know. I, I really think that we need to get the public people to say, hold on a minute, here's this, has it been explained properly, what are the cost implications? I mean, I just got a, an email I answered about a patient who had questions around reconstruction and costs, etc. And I said, look, chat to Tanya, I know nothing about it. But if there's a problem, okay, there are options, including no reconstruction, including Helen Joseph, where you can have equivalent treatment. So we've got to work, make sure people have the option to discuss everything. I think in the last, yeah, since I've been diagnosed, there's yeah. been a major focus on education and awareness around clinical breast exams, soft breast examinations. Yeah. I think maybe we should start adding on to our education and awareness okay, now you've got breast cancer, what are the steps to take from here? So that people who get diagnosed in that state of shock and bewilderment can reference back to a document that says, this is the way it should be done. And our government has a breast policy that lines out every step of the way that should be done. So maybe we must start looking at educating our diagnosed patients well, for me, it's educating people before they're diagnosed. Because the problem is, is if you are educated when you're diagnosed, have you got the education in time before you rush through a system? So I think that's very important. So maybe take that WhatsApp doc thing, and we, we need to have anyone comes into any anything, maybe out to general practice, maybe out to, and that's something I want to talk to you about, is about running a, um, a small 10-minute education around different things with Breast Health Foundation to GPs and to other people around five minutes around a radiology diagnosis, five minutes around a clinical, five minutes around a um, oncology, etc. And we can just splice different bits of information from different people because this is, a, this is important. You, you almost hope that... Doctors are going to use it. You can't sometimes change it if it's not. So maybe I always am amazed about what an amazing educated public and our people want to understand things about medicine. And there's no harm in knowing a little bit about something so that when a friend of yours is placed in a scenario, you can actually turn around to them and say, actually now, let's have a look at what all the different options are. And I think that's why the buddy concept and having somebody that can take notes or be with you in an appointment or even be in an online if we're watching around SARS-CoV-2 is critically important. Okay. Right. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you. you.